first 20 eigenvalue fractions. So that's what you're seeing is the principal components. Now, probabilistic PCA, this isn't probabilistic PCA, this is just the eigen decomposition of the uh, covariance matrix. It's interesting, notice these eigenvalues, they're all about the same, right? So probabilistic PCA actually models this eigenvalue uh, spectrum with Q eigenvalues and then the solution for the variance is the sum of the residual, the average of the residual eigenvalues, right? So you can see that actually probably by the time you get down here, the average of the residuals is about a constant. So it would almost be a, a perfect model. It seems, it, it's just, basically it's pretty much noise. Now, often people when they look at eigenvalue spectra, they, have you heard of the mythical elbow plot? The elbow plot? The mythical elbow plot. So when you do principal component analysis, you're supposed to look at the mythical elbow plot. I'm sure it's there on the Wikipedia page. If not, just check back four years and you'll find it. <laughs> I probably removed it. Um, the mythical elbow plot is when you do this eigenvalue spectrum, you see that the eigenvalues have some sort of spectrum like this. And then this is the mythical elbow. Yeah? And the idea is, so this is like the histograms we've got on the diagram. The mythical elbow is where things have become noise. So remember that in probabilistic PCA, the covariance is formed like this. Now, this has... If you look at the covariance of this part, it only has Q eigenvalues because it's rank Q. So if you were to model this with PCA, this bit here would be at level sigma, or sigma squared, I guess, depending on whether you're looking at the square of the eigenvalues or not. Maybe it's sigma squared. Yeah, I think sigma squared. Yeah, sigma squared because it's the sum of the eigenvalues is the total variance, isn't it? And then these guys here, this would be the length of W1, W1, this would be W1, W1 transposed, this would be W2, W2 transposed, this would be W3, W3 transposed. That's if you actually look at the eigenvalue decomposition of this structure here. And what people used to say before they even knew about probabilistic PCA, they talked about this mythical elbow, which is at the point at which you have residual noise that you're sort of claiming that everything under these, this point is noise. Now, in practice, these elbow plots rarely exist. You've got some, you know, so the question is, where's the mythical elbow? Is the mythical elbow here? Or is the mythical elbow here? Or is the mythical elbow here? You know, it's not clear, is it? But there's this sort of, the reason why I say it's mythical is because it's a myth. What's myth in Spanish? Mito. <laughs> yeah, it is in Italian. It's, you know, it doesn't ever exist, but it's talked about in books, right? <laughs> so it's like a cyclops or, a, or a, what's the thing with the hair and the snakes? Medusa. Medusa uh, or a mermaid. Um, okay, so the mythical elbow, it sits with the, it lives with the cyclops, the medusa and the mermaid, and it never really exists unless we look at artificial data. Um, but it is this structure. It's the structure you're trying to fit with probabilistic PCA. So interestingly, remember we said that the uh, W is given by this thing which was UQ times L, where L was equal to this guy to the half. This is the eigenvalues of the covariance minus sigma squared I. Now in practice, the eigenvalues of the covariance will probably drift down like this. So that's dangerous, isn't it? Because this variance, if we choose it here, is larger than the eigenvalues. Well, actually, the maximum likelihood solution says that you should never retain an eigenvalue for L if it's less than sigma squared. So this is something people don't use in, in, um, in probabilistic PCA in much, but it's a really good thing. If you know the noise variance, so if someone... If you, if you ask the cyclops or the medusa or the uh, mermaid what the noise variance of the data is and they say the noise variance is 0.3 and you set sigma squared to 0.3 probabilistic PCA tells you to throw away every eigenvalue where the squared, where the eigenvalue itself or the covariance is less than 0.3 
And that gives you your dimensionality automatically. Yeah? But you have to know the noise. So you have to know one thing or another. If you know the noise, you get the dimensionality. So if the noise was up this level here, you would only retain these eigenvalues. If the noise is down here, you would retain all these. If it's down here, you retain all those. So the question is, the mythical elbow question is, what is the noise level? Is it down here? Or is it here? Or is it here? If you know that, you know the dimensionality. If you don't know that, you have to select the dimensionality and it will fit the noise for you. Okay? So, what does that mean for this plot? Well, it looks like there's at least one, two, three, four. I mean, certainly the two are really dominant. Anyway, down here we're plotting the first two latent variables. Um, and what you're going to do next below that, which is a lot slower because it's actually using the iterative solution, is to find the same solution with a GPLVM with a linear kernel. So this isn't the right way of doing, uh, you know, generally you would do not, uh, doing the linear model, right? This is just a way we're going to do it for the sake of interest to show we get the same solution. So the next thing you're going to do is run a GPLVM with a linear covariance and this ARD true thing is set to allow these eigenvalues to exist. We can't, ARD is something we're going to see about in a bit. We can't really do ARD in this model, but it gives us this eigenvalue spectrum. So run that, plot the eigenvalues, stare at them for a bit and see if you can see the mythical elbow. You won't be able to. Um, and then run the nonlinear optimization to find x under the GPLVM. So in, in this case, we're using a GPLVM with k is equal to x, x transpose plus sigma squared i, yeah? So we can solve that. We can do an eigenvalue decomposition to solve that. But this exercise here is just showing you that even when you don't do an eigenvalue decomposition, you get a similar solution. Certainly up to a rotation, it should be. So it'll run for 1,000 iterations. It won't run any longer than that, because we'll be here all night. So start that as soon as you can, or else you'll be watching for ages. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes for starting that. Of course, once you've got that, you can now put any kernel in there you like, which is what you're going to see in the um, exercise 1B is to use a non-linear mapping between X and Y and see how that visualization changes. So in exercise B, you run a GPLVM, yeah? Well, this is a GPLVM too. It's just the case that's also principal component analysis. So Max wrote this lab. Max is doing a lot of work um, with these models, uh, applying them to sort of medical data. He's using a, a technology I'm going to tell you about in the deep talk, which is called MRD, which is a multi-view learning technique where we try and um, combine two data sets in the same model. Um, and we decide what information is shared across the two data sets and what is information is private to the two data sets. Um, it's something that's working really well uh, across a range of different data sets. So Max is looking at that in genetics problems uh, as part of a Marie Curie ITN. So here, oh that's surprising, we've got the first uh, four, so he's only, sorry, he's actually set the dimensionality to be four somewhere, isn't it? So input dim is four, so it's just taking these first four here, um, and then that must be plotting the first two dimensions. So we would expect to see the same result, but it looks like we're stopping too soon. So we don't see quite the same result. If we kept optimizing that, the solution is convex, we should recover the true solution. But we're doing it iteratively, yeah? So we're not, we've not got far enough from whatever initialization was. So you'd have to do it more. So the next thing to do is... So how does your linear solution differ between PCA and GPLVM? Look at the plots. Also try to consider how the linear ARD parameters compare to the eigenvalues of the principal components. So compare these two things, compare the ARD values, compare the plots. And then in exercise 1B, you're going to basically want to reproduce the code, but you're going to do something like kern equals d pi dot oh, kern dot rbf or whatever you like. Um, sort of input dim uh, and then you can set it whatever you like and then 
rerun the model with that covariance function to see how your visualization differs. It's a nonlinear mapping, so it should improve. You should get better separability between the classes. Um, and if you don't want to do four dimensions, I think it's best to just to do two, actually, because you're going to visualize it in two dimensions. So in the GPLVM, you have to specify how many dimensions you're going to use because the solution will be different if you use more dimensions. Um, the solution for principal component analysis is odd because you just keep pulling out eigenvalues, right? The first two dimensions don't change given the third because of it. it's got this sort of linear nature. But in the GPLVM, if you give it three dimensions to work with, the first two dimensions will be very different than if you only gave it two dimensions to work with, potentially. Okay? So, have a play with that.